Welcome back to Race to Win, the sailing podcast. I'm here with sailing champion and quantum sailmaker, Will Paxton. Good to talk to you again, Will. Hey, Julia. Well, this is uh, the first race on Sunday of the resin regatta, and uh, the day before had been blowing in the high 20, low 30s, and it was very cold and wet and smash and crash kind of day on the circle. And this day was threatening, but didn't quite get as windy in the first race. So we kind of reluctantly went racing uh, at the top of the Genoa which was the right call. It was flooding. Um, the water was pretty flat. It was blowing 12 or 13. Um, we actually held the Genoa for the entire race. To get us started, we're going to look at the first upwind leg of the course, and we're going to take two boats, Libra and Motorcycle Irene, which is Will's boat. If you take a look at the leg stats here, you can see that Will had a faster elapsed time, 4% less, and also sailed less distance. So basically, he was higher and faster. The maximum RQ index is 100, and the higher your RQ, the more stable your course, the more that you were in the groove. Now, it's impossible to get 100 because, of course, sometimes you're going to be at the starting line or going around a mark. So 88 is very good, and, and 72 is nothing to complain at either. Let's watch Libra sailing from the bow. And it's very clear, you can see this wavy color-coded line behind is the GPS course. And the straight line coming out is your groove analysis line. It's basically the average of your GPS course. And this is what you can get the RQ from. Here's Will sailing at the same time. You can see he has a very straight GPS track, which of course is why he has such a high RQ. So I'm going to turn off the GPS track just for clarity and leave on just the groove analysis lines. I have two boats selected here, Motorcycle and Libra. I can click each boat's tacks and compare them with the direct analysis. And I can also click the groove analysis lines to get the course speed and VMG for each segment. The most important thing to compare is the VMG. On this tack, the two boats were almost exactly the same. But on this tack, overall, Will had a better VMG than Libra and ended up finishing just a bit ahead. So I asked Will for some tips on sailing upwind in these conditions. How exactly does he get his boat to point so high while still maintaining a good boat speed? Okay, so the important part when you're going fast upwind is to just steer as little as possible. And I do a lot of steering with the fine trim on the main sheet. You know, a lot of people, they're going for the same feel on the helm, and so they steer the boat up and down, trying to maintain the same feel. But more efficiently is to trim the main in and out just slightly to maintain that feel because the leech tension makes the boat go fast, makes the boat point to the point where if you're oversheeted, then you have to use the rudder to hold the boat down. So you're going for a neutral helm, angle of heel, and the boat pointing, and use the main trim to accomplish that as much as possible. And it looks like in the video, you actually have the jib sheeted out a little bit here. Correct. Uh, another, another feature of this when you're sailing at the top of the number one Genoa is the inhauler is let the clue pretty far outboard. That allows us to let the traveler down with a lot of backstay on um, and keep some sheet tension on without the main luffing or bubbling and slowing down the flow through the slot. Yeah. Had we been on the regular track inboard, the main would, would be washed out. When we started looking at the next segment, Will was really impressed with the GeoVids overlay that we call the compass. He wanted me to make sure to mention to you guys that making your own GeoVid is really easy. All you have to do is run the footage from an action camera like a GoPro, upload it onto your computer, and the free GeoVid program takes the date and timestamp from your GoPro video and automatically puts it right in here with your 3D replay. Check it out at racecues.com by clicking on GeoVids. This is one of my favorite features of racecues. Um, as you sail along upwind here, you can see your relative angle to the horizon. And you can also see your consistency in your angle of heel, in your boat speed, in your VMG. Um, it draws a dot every second and remains for 60. So then you can watch yourself all the way through the tack, and it's going to start drawing a little cloud of dots. A darker one is recent. The faded ones are further away. And you can sit there and see just how long it gets, it takes you to dial the boat back into that sweet spot and for that little cloud of dots um, to tighten up and not be scattered all over. 
Next, we slowed it down a little so that Will could take a closer look at his tack. Now here's that same tack again on a click through. And so I'm watching the procedure as the boat heels over in the tack, it actually doesn't spin out. And uh, the boat just heads up smoothly through the tack as the crew weight moves across the boat. So this tiller moves once, there's minimal rudder drag, and the angle of heel snaps from consistently at one angle on starboard to the same angle on port without heeling over, skidding sideways. You know, the mainsail goes out while the crew's not on the rail, it comes right back in when the crew gets to the rail. The jib is trimmed in efficiently and everyone just goes right up and hits the rail and you can see that our acceleration out of the tack is very smooth and consistent. Check out the stats on this tack. Duration 6 seconds, recovery 10 seconds, and overall elapsed time lost is calculated at 3 seconds. It's pretty good, but the most interesting part was check out the statistics for the very next tack. Again here we can watch another tack and we can watch the tack from port back to starboard. And again, all the way through the maneuver um, and how long it takes to uh, get the dots all tightened up again on your consistent speed and the boat right back up to that steady VMG. And then uh, it'll spit out the statistics in the top right. How slow did you go? How long did it take to accelerate? And uh, it's a near perfect tack as all those numbers match the previous tack. And all of those numbers are, are very, very good. And uh, this is a very experienced crew. Uh, my, my trimmer, Angie Roland, has been sailing with me for 15 years and has won a couple national championships. Uh, my middle guy, Brian, has been sailing with me almost the same amount of time, won nationals. And so this is a very sharp, uh, crisp team um, to watch through some maneuvers. I thought the consistency was pretty impressive. And then I showed him what the software predicts is basically a perfect tack. So uh, we're looking through our tacks here, and Julia tells me this one is a perfect tack, which I was very skeptical of. So I'm looking at the video here to see what was different about this tack, about why we had such high VMG all the way through the thing. And the first thing I saw is looking at the analysis is that our, our course getting back up to speed is almost a completely straight line. And what I see happen either by accident or purpose in this video is the main is trimmed extra loose to keep the boat on its feet. The traveler is low and the sheet is out. So again, the boat assumes that perfect angle um, and has a very, very fast acceleration out of it. So we may have given up a little bit of height, but the, uh, the efficiency as shown in the diagram was extremely high getting up the speed out of the tack just by not being oversheeted on the main. To close us out, we found a great example of a pretty serious wind shift where the boats that went left really made out over the boats over the right. So I asked Will to walk us through this last leg and to give us his thoughts on what happened here. Okay, so here is a uh, lured mark running the last race and um, it's pretty windy and there has been a persistent left-hand shift uh, pretty much the whole regatta and the further up the course you go, the more the left shift is in. So uh, Libra actually breaks away at the bottom, I think, because they were in bad air and goes off to the left-hand side. So this is basically going to put them on the inside of the curve, and they're going to gain a bunch of distance on Peaches. Um, we elected to go straight on motorcycle just because we were covering Peaches and they were closest to us um, in scores. But the cool thing here is you can watch the track, and you can watch all the tracks curve to the left, and you can see that Libra being inside on the lifting shift um, cut the corner and sailed a much shorter course because of this. So the important part here is when you know the wind is going to go further left up ahead is to be the first one to the left so you're inside of that because every the further left you are, the more you're uh, bow up and pointed inside of anyone to your right. Even though Will knew about that left shift, he still chose to go right to cover his competition. I asked him about his decision-making process and the importance of sailing smart. Well, uh, this was the last beat of the last race of the regatta. So the closest boats to us in, point, in points went right. We went right. There's no bonus points for winning every race. There's only bonus points for beating the other guys you have to. Good point. As always, thanks again to the awesome Will Paxson. And I'd like to invite you to ask your questions to Mr. Paxson. We're going to be doing a segment, Ask the Sailmaker. Have you been struggling with getting the best shell shape out of your boat? 
Do you need some pointers on trim? Are you just wondering why you're not outpointing the competition? Send us your question and some photos or even better, a video, and we might contact you to be featured on that podcast. You can send them to me directly. It's julia.berg at racecues.com. I hope to hear from you. See you next time. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can find more on our website, www.racecues.com slash podcast. 